Today we're going to paint a pumpkin, and the first step to painting a pumpkin is basically we're going to paint like an orange sphere. So I'm going to start off with some orange paint, and I'm using unthinned liquid tempras to paint an orange circle, um, because I want the most pigment to be around the outside edge. I'm going to get it nice and saturated with color. And then what I'm going to do is thin out the paint so it looks paler or whiter or lighter as it gets in towards the middle. So I'm going to rinse off the brush and I'm going to paint over it with just water on the brush starting at the outside and basically making a spiral to thin out the pigment as it goes into the middle. So as I thin it out with more and more water it becomes paler and paler because I'm seeing through to the white of the paper and in this case it also has the effect of making it look lighter and lighter as it goes in towards the middle. Generally speaking, things that are rounded are going to be lighter in the middle and darker towards the edges. Another thing you can do is take a paper towel and wipe off some of the paint when it is still wet, sort of a subtractive method. If you want to use a little bit of color, I can use a lighter color like yellow in the middle. And I'm going to, again, make a spiral, but this time I'm going to work my way from the inside out as I go. So I'm making a larger and larger circle as I go. Um, if I want to, I could add a little bit of a red or a magenta or a darker color at the outside edge. And again, I'm going to make a spiraling pattern or spiraling motion with my brush. So I'm starting at the outside edge, and then I'm going to work my way into the middle. And painting over it with just water on the brush will help to blend the colors so it transitions a little bit more smoothly from the dark to the medium to the light. At this point, I would set it aside and let it dry. Um, it, it can be painted wet on wet, but that's harder for most kids. While my pumpkin painting is drying, I am going to start work on my background. I am printing using found objects. That is basically what it sounds like. I am using objects that I find as stamps. So in this case, I'm using an old film canister, and I am dipping it into a little bit of paint to use it as a stamp and basically stamping those circles onto the background of my paper. What I want to do is get a little bit of variety so I might add some other colors to it. I might add a little bit of blue paint so I get some blue circles as well as the red. And I want to fill my entire page making an abstract background but I want to get some variety to it so I'm going to use this texture plate for the top portion creating something almost like a horizon line which is going to give this print a little bit of depth and a little bit of sense of space even though it is completely abstract or you might say non-objective. Next I'm going to let the background dry and finish painting my pumpkin. So I'm going to take this sample that I made in an another day that's already dry and I'm going to start by just sort of sketching the segments of it. I'm going to put a little bit of red on to divide up the segments, and I think of it almost like there's a vanishing point at the top and bottom. Every line is arcing out beginning and ending at sort of vanishing points at the top and bottom. So I'm using a repetition of curved lines to also imply that it's rounded because repeating curved lines will look like it's wrapped around a curved form. And I'm going to start off with just sort of a green rectangle for the stalk at the top. I might add a little a little bit of yellow to make it lighter sort of in the middle. Again, thinking of it like a cylinder, it's going to be lighter in the middle and get darker as it goes towards the edges. And then I might add some other details. I might add a little pop of color, like yellow streaks. And again, I'm trying to keep curved brush strokes to repeat the idea that curved strokes will look like they're wrapped around a curved form. So the curved brush strokes also help to enhance the sense that it's rounded. Adding black or white is always sort of the last thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little pop of white on there for some highlights, but I like to mix it in with the yellow so it's not a pure white. And then I might also add a little bit of black in some areas as well. Again, just trying to get that pop of extra contrast to make all the details stand out and make it easily visible even from a distance. So I'm going to trace over all of those lines, and I'm thinning out the brush, trying to make it 
just a quick sort of brush stroke for those lines. It is okay if it is not perfect because pumpkins are organic forms. They are a little bit lumpy and a little bit irregular. So I just try to make quick passes. I don't want to go over it or worry over it too much because it might overwork the painting and it's more realistic if it's imperfect. And that's about it. We're just gonna let this dry and then cut out the pumpkin. As you cut out the background, remember you don't have to cut out the background as one continuous piece. A lot of people find it easier to cut from different angles and break it down into smaller manageable chunks. Next, you're gonna glue it onto your background. Um, I always try to put just a nice thin line of glue around the perimeter but not right at the edge. I put it about one finger away from the edge so the glue doesn't get smushed out onto the front of my paper as I press it down. You might consider adding some other things like facial features or accessories to give it a little bit of a unique personality. I like to use cut shapes of paper that I can glue on because one of the benefits of using cut paper for this, taking that collage approach, is it allows me to rearrange pieces and experiment with the placement of sunglasses or nose or mouth or any other features that I might want to add to it. So I just put a thin line of glue onto my piece and then I'm going to put it down and like I say I can experiment thinking about how would it look if I change the angle of the smile. I might slide it to another position like this. I can make adjustments until I find an arrangement I'm happy with and then just set it aside and let it dry.